What's up, everybody? It's Nick here from thegameraccess.com, joined by Sarah. How are you doing today, Sarah? I'm fantastic, Nick. How are you? I'm doing awesome. I like your sarcasm. Oh, good. And we've got a special <laughs> guest tonight. We've got Ivana. So tell us a little bit about yourself, Ivana. I am the president and founder of Charisma Plus Two, which is an agency of gamer models. I pretty much uh, the only one in the world. <laughs> I mean, actually, you know what? There are some smaller ones coming up. So that's kind of exciting for me. A lot of people were wondering, like, did I feel threatened by it or something? <laughs> but I have 250 models. And oh, wow. many, many of the um, little ones cropping up are girls that used to be with me. So, you know, really there's enough business in this in this industry to go around. So, I mean, great. I'm, I'd much rather have another agency that uh, with gamer models than, you know, to have uh, to then to have a, a developer choose someone who's completely clueless about games and they think that they're better than all the stinky boys as they put it out there you yeah know? your typical booth babe yeah exactly <laughs> I've, right i've been to enough conventions trust me i know <laughs> exactly how that is and then you've got your guys that go there that's like the one time they leave their house and they think that these booth babes are like into them it's like dude <laughs> they don't it's like it's like when you go to a strip club they're like dude she's really Enemy. It's like, no, she's a con artist. Right. Yes, yeah, she's so in you. Go ahead. Give her your car. It's all right. <laughs> yeah, but uh, what, so what pretty much, obviously, you said that there's a lot of people kind of following your route. So you were the original. So congratulations on that. Thank but, you very much. It was fun. But what pretty much what inspired you to launch the Charisma Plus Two modeling agency? Well, it's interesting because um, there's actually, I mean, I guess I should make this. Um, definition of it i mean or whatever should say that frag dolls were there but they were marketers for ubisoft right right so that's different you know um but what basically started it was this video game which was in 05 and uh so i was in the fine the top five for that and they were basically, it was a year-long thing. It was, oh, my gosh, it was such a huge ordeal at the time. Now, it's like probably like people don't even know what it was. But at the time, it was really big because uh, and incredibly controversial because now it's, it's I, maybe it's just my world, but I think it's acceptable for, the, for, game, for gamer girls to be attractive. And, and it's, it's and attractive comes in such a wide variety of shapes and sizes. But at the time, it was hugely like, oh, you're just uh, objectifying them, is what they were telling the, the people that started it, which was Titan, put this, uh, this Miss Video game together. So we all got online and we talked, and uh, the top, we did uh, Counter Strike. Okay. And the reason they did Counter Strike was because so that girls in like, yeah, I don't know, you know, Russia and all over. I mean, I like one of the girls I played Counter Strike with was uh, from one of the Eastern Bloc countries. I'm sorry, I don't remember which one, but she had to go to a cyber cafe. So it was the scheduling was insane for this. Like when she was up, would I be up? And we'd we'd have to get together, and she'd have to be there when the cyber cafe was open. I mean, it was that crazy. So it took a year for us to go through the whole thing. And when we were there, uh, the finals they sent the they sent the top five to uh, Montreal. And we went to, oh, my God, I'm such a loser because I cannot <laughs> remember the name of the uh, convention. But we did it at a convention. We had the finals there, and it was super fun. Oh. So, yeah, that's, so, the, oh, 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 so you answered, I didn't answer your question. <laughs> so, basically, what happened was I became friends with all these girls, and I was like, oh, my gosh, and, oh, 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 Nick, <laughs> Sarah, this is the coolest thing. So my first two <laughs> models were Adele and uh, Lauren. Okay. And the, re and the reason why I, I started this was because it was so cute. They had, they had done some photos of the girls when they were there. You know, like they had a photographer and they're like, okay, let's do that. And they had just no idea on what to do. It was so cute. And meanwhile, I'd been in Europe modeling for six years and I know I'm a gamer so when I came back and I worked for Nintendo at uh, E3 and then I ended up doing this uh, Miss Video Game thing I'm like this would be great I could just teach girls how to model because to me it's so much easier to teach a girl how to model than it is to teach a model how to game 
oh yeah, oh yeah, I can, I can understand that. That's a good point. Plus, like, it, it'd be hard to find someone that you can teach how to play video games and then, you know, have a passion for it. They, they don't. They Even if you can teach a girl... Uh, even if you can teach a girl how to game, you you cannot give them that passion. Like, I mean, I, I didn't start when I was four. It seems like every girl I know started gaming when they were four. I didn't. But yeah, I was five. <laughs> so it's pretty much no, the same. Yeah, it's like this, like magic aura time or something. But <laughs> if you if you haven't if you don't have that passion for it, then it, you just can't instill it into the girls. And the reason why I wanted to have a gamer agency was a uh, gamer model agency was because I wanted to know that the girls would show up and that they'd want to be there. You know? I mean, I was like, this is... Yeah! Like, you know, it's just like, who would want it... When I was was working um, Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess, this is when it was still on the GameCube. I know, y'all were probably like in junior high. (laughs) Really? When it was on the GameCube? (laughs) It was like right before the Wii came out. And it was so... In my opinion, I I thought it was a lot better on the GameCube. But um, when when that was happening, I was like, this is such a, what a loss. I know so many girls that would just give uh, anything to be doing this. And a lot of them could. So, like Lauren. And uh, I did Lauren's first shoot with her. If, if, you, if y'all don't know who Leet Lauren is, um, she's pretty phenomenal. And uh, Lauren, and, the and, one that is uh, Cliffy B's fiance, correct? Right. Right. So I did her first photo shoot with her. It was in a cemetery, and she had made a uh, WoW outfit. It was pretty awesome. Yeah, we, and we did gorilla photography. She's sitting there biking. <laughs> that was cool. <laughs> oh, God, just don't, mess in, don't mention uh, Jessica's name around her. <laughs> There's a oh, funny <laughs> Sarah knows what I'm talking about, so I have to put. Uh, I'll put everyone. I, I'll put everyone on, and even Ivana, because Ivana probably doesn't even know. So, uh, E3 2011, uh, me and Jessica and a couple of her friends, we covered E3 together. Mm-hmm. And uh, Jessica had like this huge crush. She had never met Cliffy B. She's a huge Gears of War fan. She's cosplayed as Anya Stroud from Gears of War. It looked phenomenal. So. When and I t- this is Lollipop Chainsaw, Jessica? Yes, yes, Jessica okay, Negri. She's so adorable. She's so cute. Yeah, so when I tell her, okay, I was like, all right, look, we're all going out to E3. She's like, oh, my God, oh, my God. So she put up this video. And she put mm-hmm. up this video saying how she was going to rape Cliffy B when she gets to E3 and this and that. <laughs> so I, I tweeted it out. And uh, Cliffy B and I have communicated a couple times. So I shot him an email, shot him the video. Next thing you know, Cliffy B goes on Twitter and he tweets the video out. Uh-huh. So, Twitty, twi- uh, uh, Cliffy B has a lot of twi- followers. Twitty B. Shut up. <laughs> I was getting Twitter and Cliffy mixed up. Don't ask me why. But Cliffy B goes out there and tweets it out. And of course, if Cliffy B tweets it out, his girlfriend at the time, they were not engaged, uh, Lauren, uh, sees it. And mm-hmm. she goes on there. She puts on like, oh, how I'm going to have to get security guards and this and that. So we thought it was really funny. We're like reading these tweets when we're eating dinner or whatever. So the next day, I was like, we've got to make sure Jessica meets up with Cliffy B. So I walked to the press desk, and I was like, okay, we're trying to get some set with Cliffy B. Now, Yvonne, I'm sure you know, if you don't have a meeting scheduled before the convention, it's next to impossible, especially with someone like Cliffy B and for a game as big as, at the time, Gears of War 3. Um, Unfortunately, that was kind of last minute. It was like, they're like, yeah, he's kind of booked, but you can go to this this registration desk, and they might be able to work some for you. So like, all right. So anyone that goes, has been to E3, you know, walking between the halls, there's that outdoor walkway where they have all the food yep. trucks. And right. uh, we're walking down that uh, food truck aisle, and we go up the ramp, and all of a sudden I hear Jessica whisper, there he is. And I'm like, oh what? I look to my left, and there's Cliffy B with Lauren. So I'm, I'm like, Cliffy B, I got to introduce you to Jessica. Now, Yvonne, after we're done doing this, I'll send you a... And actually, in the post, I'm going to link you guys. I've got this all on video. So... <laughs> sure, Jessica will appreciate that. Oh, my God. No, she, she laughs at it to this day. So at the time, I didn't have my camcorder out, but she had her iPad. So I'm like, introducing them or whatever. And I, Jessica had her, her iPad in her hand. So I took the iPad out and I started pressing record. I was like, Jessica, it's recording. Now at the time, she was like, oh, I want to talk to him about this, this, and this. She brought like all the stuff she wanted him to sign. She froze. Like she was so starstruck. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> she was so starstruck. And while this happens, you see Lauren give her this dirty look. It is classic. 
Her face is priceless, <laughs> and Jessica doesn't even notice it. I'm like, oh my god, I'm trying not to crack up, because I'm holding, I'm like, oh my god, she looks so pissed. And she literally said, like, two words to him, and Cliffy B is, like, constantly talking and talking and talking. She's like, uh, yeah? <laughs> like, she froze up. She was a completely different person. That's so cute. And then <laughs> once that happened, we talked to him for, like, a good five, ten minutes. And we continued walking or whatever once we got into the hall. And I was like, all right, Jessica, so how did it go? And then she's still frozen up. I'm like, oh, my God. That's so, funny. And then it was funny because two days, it was the day after E3 or two days after E3, Cliffy B proposed to her. And I'm like, Jessica, you see what you did? <laughs> <laughs> she was like, yeah, I was gonna say, if it looks like she's pissed, she's probably totally thinking about something else because those two have been like, seriously, I mean, there is nothing that from the day they met, they were destined to be married. I mean, they were just so perfect, like from that get go. She may have even been thinking about something else, or it may have just been like, oh, brother, or whatever. But, <laughs> but, I don't um, think it was anything serious. I think it was just yeah, to be a joke. Just, yeah, because she, she has just, he has been so completely smitten with her like since their first date and even before it and it was really cute because they they asked me i remember god i remember well at the time lauren was working at um id and so um, i went by to pick her up and i don't we're going to lunch or something and so she asked me about him right and i'm like okay my only reservation would be this because you two are so perfect for each other it's it's almost crazy how perfect even the, their sense of humor is the same everything they're so perfect for each other and i said the, the only thing that would be my reservation is that if he can't see how perfect you are for each other i don't know where you would go after him i mean what what would you do like you date you date you date cliff <laughs> and then what you right. know and, and she's a huge gamer right I mean, enormous and, and i don't know if if you knew that that's what he asked her when he proposed to her is do you want to be my co-op buddy, co buddy for life? Oh. Wow. And so, I mean, they are just so freaking adorable. So I, I'll have to see that. But, yeah, I'm sure it was just, it was nothing too serious. But, yeah, so the first time I met Lauren was at the Miss Video Game thing. And she's from uh, New Orleans. And um, I went up to Montreal. And she was, she got there about a, um, a little bit before me. And it was only supposed to be a short wait, like maybe 20 minute wait till my plane landed. And it was like a couple of hours and she was up there and she did not have a jacket. And I was like, Oh no. And so she's just sitting there freezing her little piney off waiting for me to come to the outside, um, for, to, to meet up, to go to the hotel and everything. I'm like, Oh, bless your heart. <laughs> but, um, yeah, we've, I've actually, you know, it was really interesting because um, I don't remember what it was. Oh, we were going back over QuakeCon because that's coming up, oh, my God, in like a week and a couple of days. Yeah, I was about to say QuakeCon's right around the corner. Right. And so every QuakeCon, because QuakeCon's really old and it's like the same group of people that have been there since like 02. <laughs> and... Um, I'll get interviewed about like, I think my first, so I found out my first one was 04. But um, they, they'll ask all these different questions about, do you remember this? Do you remember that? And a lot of the girls that are out there right now were at one time QuakeCon girls, and so it was fun. Or I had, I had met them then, and now they're off doing their just phenomenal things. Um, I remember doing, do, do you all know who uh, Dana J for Jade is? I do yeah. not. I yeah, do. so, so um, I did her first photo shoot with her, and then also with Jessica Rabbit. Who both of them are kind of MLG girls. Jessica Rabbit then, sounds familiar. She's awesome. Uh, she's pretty freaking hot, <laughs> and uh, she's a big Halo player. I mean, she probably plays other things too. But and uh, and Dana is going over. I just talked to her the other day. She's going over to Seoul, Korea, to do like shout casting or something. And I'm oh, like, wow, cool, <laughs> nice. So yeah, it's it's been interesting. And so I've, I've so basically. What happened was through Miss Video Game and talking a year with, oh, well, my gosh, 100 girls all over the world that are gamers, um, you get to know a lot of girls. And then that's how it ended up starting the, the thing about trying to push for gamer models. It's still very, you would be surprised at how hard it is to talk developers into using girls that game. 
Yeah, you would, like, a lot of people in this industry, they're like, they're, oh, there's no such thing as woman and gamer. They don't blend. And I'm like, yes, they do. It's like, I've been in this industry, it's, it's been four years now. And it's like, I've yep. met so many. And like, well, you don't even have to be in the industry. You just have to have a brain well, yeah. to understand that. I mean, like, how, ugh, sorry, <laughs> I'm just going to start bitching. But like, <laughs> people are so ignorant and stupid. Like, how do you? Well, and the problem is, well, what, what, you know, when I built this company, I, like, I have, I hardly ever talk to anybody that's a gamer that doesn't say, oh my God, that's brilliant, right? What a great idea. However, it's, it's the developers, um, and not really even the game developers themselves. I'll say the marketing people for the developers that have basically, one thing I did not ask myself, I thought it'd be a no-brainer. I thought, okay, if the girl's just as pretty as the girl that is, doesn't game, why wouldn't you use the girl that has product knowledge and a passion about it? Because right. that person's going to be so much better at marketing, right? Because they actually like it, <laughs> you know? Right. I mean, it's like, I guess probably, you know, any any industry with anything, if you actually know the product and you enjoy it, then it, you're going to be better at selling it. So I thought, well, that's going to be a no-brainer. But what I didn't think about was, um, and I'm sure this has happened to you, Nick, as you get bigger and bigger, is that there are a lot of aspects to the um, business side of things that you don't, you hadn't taken into consideration. Oh, God. Like, if you ask me my opinion on gaming, like, before I got into this business, it'd be completely different. Like, yeah. <laughs> the business side of things, I love it, but also hate it at the same time. Like Me too. You, <laughs> you know, like, it's really easy to find out, like, who's shady, who's not. Like, what goes on behind the scenes and, like, oh, my God. <laughs> you just gotta, you gotta, you gotta figure out who you want to hang with because you do not there's some people i won't i won't get into the stories but I, i'm sure you've experienced the same thing like there's some crazy things that go down like just at these events alone and you hear yeah. things and it's like you yeah. know that now that can't be true and later find you f do find out that it is true and it's like oh my god <laughs> i i it's it's kind of interesting um i i don't even but anyway one of the things i did not think about was that the people that hire First off, before I started this whole thing, I didn't even know promotional modeling existed. I had only done print and runway and, um, and acting. Okay, so, and I was actually pursuing acting more than I was anything at the time that I got into doing this. And so, um, I didn't even know promotional, like the whole Vanna White, hey, here's a t-shirt and look at this beautiful thing. I didn't know that even existed <laughs> as an industry until I went to E3. And that was my first gig doing that. And, um... But I didn't realize that the people, the marketers for the developers, were already in bed, well, sometimes literally. Yeah, you aren't kidding. Agencies with the agencies that they use. So they don't care if you play games or not because they want the people that they've been friends with. Now, right. On one hand, I kind of get that. I, I want to push people that I've been friends with, you know. On the other hand, um, like my girls will tell you. I've had girls that are just incredibly marketable. Some some female gamers are have really extroverted personalities, and some don't. Well, the really quiet girls will probably not get as pushed as hard unless they want someone quiet. Like, for instance, let's say I'm doing a big booth, and you have these girls that are bouncing off the walls because they're so excited to be there. Those are the great girls to have out in the front of the booth. But let's say you have some of the upper level executives that are going to be um, talking to uh, some of the developers. Then you may want someone who's not really super hyper. Right. Right. So it depends. But um, yeah, so th it's been kind of it's been uh, it's it hasn't been an easy six years. It's, uh, it's oh, been yeah, I can imagine. Down. It's been up and down and up and down. Yeah, I'm learning a lot. I think really any industry that you become, the more and more involved you become, the more mm -hmm. and more you get to love it, but you also hate it at the same time. I think that's really any industry because you get to see it yeah. from aspects that the general public does not. And that's true. You, your complete outlook on it just changes extensively. And like you said, networking, like meeting people, that's the best thing you can do. Like when people ask, like, asking for advice networking is the number one thing obviously you want to work hard and do this but it's like sometimes it's who you know not yep, it, 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 that can help you get to places you would it yeah it's you can work hard but if you don't know people and meet certain connections you're just going to keep working and working and work you got to work smart at the same time right. so and and you know what's really bad too 
is, um, or good, is it's who you know, but you may know, like for me, um, I tend to know generally just because of circumstances. I know, um, I'll say uh, executives. Right. But not necessarily the people that do events or the marketing people per se. So that doesn't do me any good. If I know the lead designer, well, for instance, Cliff. So he's the lead designer. He really doesn't have anything to do with, well, him more than others. He actually has more to do with marketing, I think, than probably any of the other developers in the entire Oh, yeah, industry. definitely. But they don't. he doesn't really handle events. That's not his arena. Right. He does more PR type of things, right? So, And even in that respect, he'll still hand it off to um, someone else who, who takes care of those things for me. But the if just because I know the game, for instance, the... Um, if I know the lead designer on uh, Borderlands, it doesn't mean it doesn't really help me unless I know the events person or the marketing person. Right. And so sometimes it's who you know, but it, for if you're just if you're doing a lot of interviews, I could see where that would be true. But for me, doing um, a particular service, it's it's sometimes it's uh, it's it's ended up being nice because I've developed these relationships over the years. But it's really just friendships mostly for me. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Making relationships with these people definitely helps a lot because... Is there really great people? I oh, mean, yeah. There's a ton of great people in the industry. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's there's some people that, like, you try to talk to them and they have, like, no personality. And it's like, okay, time to move on to the next one. And then, like, the next guy you meet or woman you meet is, like, cool. And, like, you start talking, like, not even just gaming, just life. Next just thing like you know, Yeah. Next thing you know, you're contacting each other on a regular basis talking about whatever. So... Definitely, and that's why I tell people, like, once you meet these people face-to-face, -face, it's completely different than communicating over email or even the phone. It's completely different. Like, you get, but until you meet face-to-face, -face, your relationship's kind of, it's stuck in that zone, whereas when you meet face-to-face, -face, it kind of branches out quite a bit, but. True. So, like, for, let's say, a woman, I mean, there's, like you said, like we've said, there's a lot of women in the gaming industry. If they were looking to possibly take on the role of looking into getting into modeling, attending these events... What what type of advice would you give them as far as if they wanted to become a part of Charisma Plus Two and like what should they expect in becoming involved with the agency? So it's, it depends on the year. Like some years, I have just enormous demand, and some years I don't because generally what will happen is a company, a, a, a studio, or a publisher will will hire the agency to take care of the whole year, and then. Uh, those are big projects. On smaller ones, they'll just come in as they come in, like a, a few here and a few there. But the biggest thing to do, and I think one of the biggest mistakes that girls make um, when they're starting to get into this is that they try to be really, really sexy. <laughs> and it just comes off looking um, like amateur porn. Right. And um, what marketers really want is someone really friendly and happy. And for some reason, they're all doing the whole do me face. Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, and you're like, yeah, the, I just, because what they really want is, hey, look, I'm playing this game and I'm having a blast, right? Well, right. we both know. We all know. Uh, Sarah knows this too. That's not really what you look like when you're playing the game, but when you get to meet <laughs> those people, it is how you look. Right. Okay, so. Yeah. <laughs> It reminds so, me of how I was making fun of the people at, at um, the E3, like the demonstrations. <laughs> I was uh, video chatting with Nick one night, and I was playing. Um, I was playing a game, and I was holding the controller up like in front of my face, and I was like, "Yeah!" I was like shaking oh, the controller yeah. and smashing buttons, <laughs> and I'm like, and then I would pretend that I was doing like an E3 press conference. And I'd be like, <laughs> "I I love doing this. I need to do it more because I was cracking myself up." I'm like, "No." Listen, watch what happens when I press the triangle button on my controller. And then I do it, and I'm just like, and my character jumps. <laughs> and wait for applause. Wait for yes. applause. Or like, the, or like Microsoft's Kinect demonstrations. Those are always oh, fun. Oh, no, that's so hard. <laughs> that's so horrible. And yeah, and, and, yeah exactly. Well, and, and, and it's okay, because like what I try to think about and what I tell the girls to think about like when they're doing their photo shoots and they're starting to get a portfolio together it isn't realistically like you're saying what do we expect every now and then there will be someone who's just god they're just awesome out the gate they just needed a little bit of guidance right for the most part girls take about a year realistically to get comfortable in front of the camera if they're not used to it 
Um, and then some girls are just like they got so much personality and it just comes beaming through. And I said, okay, if you feel really stupid, um, smiling, <laughs> yep. I then, do. then think about what it would be like, for instance, to meet Cliff or to meet Miyamoto <laughs> or to meet some of these people, whatever your favorite game is, um, you know, to meet the people that are making the game, your game, you know, how everyone has their game. Right. Um, there's a level of excitement that would be really hard to hide, you know, um, and that can help spark some of that happiness, you know, or, or the excitement of just, hey, getting to midnight launch and getting the, the game that you want, you know. And then for a lot of us, um, another totally different look, what I'll have the girls, I give a lot of pointers. In fact, I'm going to be doing that when we were, we were talking the other day, Nick, about videos and stuff. I'm, I've tried over the last five years to get girls to do content, and it's really, really, really freaking hard. So I'm going to be doing a lot of it myself. One of the things is um, giving girls pointers on, on what to do, like, like thinking about the first time you met your boyfriend. <laughs> the, and, and when you just say, like, let's say you're saying that story to the photographer without moving your lips. You're just saying it with your eyes or you're remembering it. And you remember, you know, you may look off a little bit. You may remember, recall that moment that you realized you loved him or whatever. That's going to come through the picture. And so, uh, and then there's other things that aren't so emotionally based. Like, basically, you'll have to find the good angle. For me, I look like a refrigerator if I stand square to the camera. So I have to... <laughs> <laughs> wow, first time I've heard that one. I do. I'm just really blocky, squared. Um, and so I'll, uh, if I turn my hips, my, like if I face one of my hips to the camera, but then I turn my top towards the camera, which is really a good position for a lot of girls because it slenderizes the bottom part and it makes the top accentuated. You and it makes try the, that, Nick. Yeah, Nick, do that. Oh, it God. Makes your, it makes your weight really uh, smaller, generally speaking. So that's for a lot of girls. So you'll see all those kind of things as well. Um, but for the most part, in a video that shows a lot of personality, I have, I, in fact, I was just going through some the other day. Uh, one of the girls, her name's Shayla, S-H-A-Y-L-A. -A. And actually, I haven't even announced it. I'm supposed to announce it tomorrow. She's the last QuakeCon girl. Oh, uh, Nice. And so, uh, but she has just gobs of personality and fun. Well, that's what they want to see. If, if you're just saying, oh, hi, that's not interesting for the marketers. You know, they don't want, they don't want to have that at their booth. They don't want to have girls sitting there on their cell phone or just, you know, picking their nose. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that would be my advice. Yeah, I've, like I said, it, it, when you go to so many events, you can definitely just, you don't even have to talk to them. You can kind of look and be like, okay, they're legit. She's right. just here. She's ready to get her paycheck and leave. <laughs> like, right. it's so easy to differentiate them. But, so Charisma Plus 2, what year was it established? 06, but we didn't really start doing gigs until 08 because I didn't have any idea how long all the businessy aspects would oh, take. Oh, God, yeah. I'd say 07, 08, but uh, yeah. Oh my gosh, wait a minute. Let me think. I may have done, um, yeah, wait, okay, 04, 05, 06. Yeah, so 07, um, we did uh, QuakeCon, maybe even 06. Oof, gosh, it's just, I don't know. They're all starting yeah, it's to hard to keep together. up. It's hard to keep up with it. <laughs> yeah, events blend together for me too. Don't feel bad. <laughs> the, the QuakeCon was our first gig because I was a QuakeCon girl and because I'd, I'd grown close to it in the process. And I actually, because I, I uh, came to know uh, Todd Hollinshead before. Oh, okay. Wait, I, I found him. I found him. I saw him at a, uh, he, he used to have a, a Viper, a Ooh. Dodge Viper. He looks like the guy that would drive a Viper. He's got that long ponytail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he doesn't so much anymore. You should, I mean, yeah, he does still look like that. But, I mean, he doesn't, his hair's not so long anymore. He has a girlfriend that's been slowly... <laughs> <laughs> Down on the cut it out. <laughs> Dude, just cut a little bit each time, right? Just come on, just a little bit. Just okay, each time, just a little bit more, a little bit more. Um, but yeah, so we became friends um, outside of that uh, because I saw him at a Viper Owners um, event, and uh, so yeah, uh, they gave me the the first, my first 
gig uh, for Charisma Plus 2 that was like a professional thing. That was pretty cool. It was really nice. With the it Viper? It was crazy back then. Oh, uh, Id. Oh, with Id? Okay. But yeah, I mean, I got to know him through there, and he's like, you don't know games. And I, and I had actually seen his, um, the W on his hat. Uh-huh. Friend, it was the Wolfenstein W, and I was like, I know that. No, you don't. Yes, I do. No, I don't. No, you don't. I said, he goes, what is it? And I said, it's Wolfenstein. I said, Return to Castle Wolfenstein was one of my favorite games. And he's like, no way. And he said, <laughs> he's like, quit. It. And he's with, there with Adrian Carmack, who, who's no longer a dead. And I was like, yes, I can. I said everything. And then, and then um, he's like, this is crazy. Because I just <laughs> didn't like the type of person who would play. And uh, so, yeah, the next year I was a QuakeCon girl. And then... We got the quick. Then after three years, I was managing them and bringing them in, and yeah, now they play all the time. And now this that for since I've been there, they weren't even that. They would they didn't even really think it was that important first to have girls that played. Oh, Leet Lauren and Tech um, T three K. Uh, I got them to play um, Todd and Marty. Uh, I think they played Quake Three or yeah, Quake Three Arena, and so anyway, the the time for the at, at QuakeCon got changed like four times. The location got changed a couple of times, and so it ended up happening at like three a.m. in the morning. Oh God! Somewhere in two twice changed locations, and there's like a huge crowd there, and and um you know coverage and press and everything, and and they're like, oh maybe there is something to this girls and gaming thing, right? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> they got their butts whipped, but oh. <laughs> well, in all fairness, those guys chose the one. You know how everybody has their map? Yeah. Okay, well, so they developed the game. Yeah, that's kind of putting them at a disadvantage right there. <laughs> I think that they were afraid that they were going to whoop up on them because those two were good, right? And they're like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. But they had had it down to a science. They'd been doing it for so many years, like, you know, all the time. So, But right. it was fun. That's good. So, obviously, Charisma Plus 2 sounds like it's come a long way uh, since it first started. What's been some of the most memorable moments, you would say, uh, since you started it back in 06, 07? Uh, let's see. Oh, my gosh, that's such a hard question, but it's good. <laughs> I, I would say um, one year we did five booths at E3 at the same time. Oh, wow. That, wow. That's kind of crazy. Um and then that was a pretty epic moment for me. Uh, let's see. Hmm. I, I, I'm, I'm, well, I really liked having the magazine. I loved having a flip magazine. We don't have the flip magazine anymore because it was just too hard to get. Oh, my God. It was so insane. But you know what I'm talking about? Like, a, it's, it's, um, uh, it's page flip or whatever now. Paper it's easier. Copy. Yeah. Now it's even a lot easier. At the, when I first started it. Oh, oh, because I didn't know HTML when I started this company, but then I had to learn it just because I just needed so much web help. And so, uh, at the time, they didn't even have those flip or they were automatic. It, you had to program it in. Oh, wow. But, yeah, we, so that was a pretty... I liked having the magazine, though, so that the girls could have content and they could get their feet wet. Like, I guess a lot of... I guess nowadays, a lot of people do podcasts. Right. They get their that you know just get their foot in the door a little bit and uh so oh i know one of the highlights was we got um we got interviewed by game sauce which was a like people not in the industry may not know it and it only goes to a certain developer publisher uh bracket okay and, uh, but it's a it's a hard back cover magazine and uh, that was really cool. And in fact, I'd ended up uh, getting called by Lionhead um, right when Fable 2 or 3, I don't know, I always get confused, uh, it was coming out. And they were like calling me from England. And they're like, <laughs> oh, wait, you're in the magazine. I was just, I was just in the lobby looking at, at your company. <laughs> freaking cool oh my god i feel so nationwide i mean worldwide now <laughs> that's awesome so, that's a fun moment that yeah. really cool. i'll probably think of a really cool epically awesome moment why we three. yeah right we, <laughs> that's how it always is you always forget and then when you remember you're done recording 
<laughs> All right, so obviously Lauren, she's moved on. She's doing amazing things. Um, she's getting married to one of the most successful people in the industry, like of all time. But what would you say are some of your more uh, successful models? And like, where have they gone? Are they still with Charisma Plus Two? What are they doing now? Well, a lot of them will get jobs in the industry. So, like, what happened? Well, for instance, I, I one of my favorite girls. Um, her name's Ricka. In fact, she was going by Erica, and I, I made her name Ricka, and she's like, okay. <laughs> um, she was a QuakeCon girl one year, and then ended up, uh, she's really sharp, too. But she ended up getting a QA job, and now she's senior QA or something like that. But it, yeah, she's senior QA. Um, but what will end up happening is they may get, because in marketing, it's not like you're going to be generally... You're not going to be lead game designer. <laughs> right, right. Uh, but you will be able to get your foot in the door. One of my um, one of my girls who was doing uh, game at makeup for a long time, she probably did it for a couple of years. Went to school to get uh, for level uh, design, and she get, and she got she graduated, but now she's at Gearbox. Um, another girl is at EA. So they they basically a lot of the girls will go. Because they end up meeting people in the industry and wanting to do that. Now, for me, I have to say it's kind of sad because I end up losing them. I mean, it's, I right. feel kind of like a mom at that point. It's like, oh, <laughs> my baby's so grown up. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's exciting at the same time. Um, and then, like I was telling you, Dana is going over to Seoul and she's doing just, she's a go getter. She, she was, I always knew she was going to do something. And generally, I'd say people stay with me until they get, I, I, I say that they uh, were graduated or something like that. Right. It's when they go into the industry. They actually, on their own, not just repping a, uh, another company, but they're employees. Actually a part of that company, yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's, it's, they're successful. It's great, uh, but I do miss them. And now, now finally, I've gotten to a point where I'm large enough and I'm getting enough references, and I get now. Their girls are telling the other girls, "Oh, I know one of my favorite moments." You asked me a minute ago. <laughs> I knew you knew it'd come back. <laughs> you knew it would come because you just circle with it, okay? <laughs> Is that um okay? So the, with the magazine, um and. With the agency, one of the most important things for me has been to foster a community of support. Um, we have a three rule. We ha I have three main rules. One is, um, I'll say no jerks, no female jerks. <laughs> Guys are all cool. I don't have to worry about them being, uh, what does my mother call them? Witches. <laughs> no, no witches, and I don't mean that in the, in the religious sense. The, those are allowed, uh, but yeah, no witches and no attitude and no drama. That's good. And, and so, what ends up happening? And if you do cause drama, I've had to let go of a couple of girls, but mostly I've had to let go go of girls because of alcohol, um, which is crazy. Because I mean, we used to get. Oh my God, just snonkered. It's like QuakeCon was ridiculous. But most of them. <laughs> I've been to these events. <laughs> I've seen more than enough. Oh my gosh. Well, you know what? I mean, this is back before Zenimax owned them. We would get. Oh man. We'd have, I'd say we'd have anywhere between 15 to 20 shots before dinner. <laughs> Like just throughout the day. So it's like four days. Of, and everybody will tell you that's the way it is. And, and it's just constant but now it's totally different the business it's it's actually pretty professional in fact right. I, I will tell people i will tell people which events are okay and which ones aren't and which ones are more permissive uh e3 regardless of how much fun it is the girls are not permitted to be drunk in any way right and, and um that's good if, you're, if you are you're not allowed to drink at all if you're not 21 i had to let go of a girl because of that and um oh it was bad and we so we have a we have some other rules, but they're just basic professional rules. No one in the right, no professional company would let their employees drink underage. Right. It's not. It's not. It's not like I'm just being, you know, a, a, a hard person to deal with. It's just the way it is. It's any professional business. So, um, one of the best things about it is that 
it seems to attract girls that really want to support each other and help each other. For me, it's it's probably one of the most important things that there is about the agency is I really want to help girls feel good about themselves and I try to help them get there. And when you when I get letters from girls like, okay, one of my ones that sticks out to my mind is um, Trix, T-R-I-X. And she She's wrote... She's my favorite person in the whole world. I love her. She's like, seriously, I can't even tell you how much I love her. She's... Like one of my best online friends. Like seriously, <laughs> she she was she was so sweet. It was before she was pregnant, um, and so last year she did a tour with uh, Turtle Beach. Well, at E3, the the events person said we never hired the same girl twice, right? And she went, oh yeah. <laughs> 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 she went to every convention with them, and. At the end of the year, she found out she was preggers, and she was like, okay, so I'm going to have to take a little time off here, but I just wanted you to know that thank you so much. First off, she waited for a year to apply because she was getting herself in shape. So it was really meant a lot to me that she sent in her application, and I was like, yes, but I'd love to have you on, blah, blah, blah. She's like, oh, my gosh. So that would really touch me that someone would go to that much effort, you know? Right. A lot of, because I hate girls that just expect to be spoon-fed. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And it happened. And so she said, you know what? At the end of the, when she was, she goes, I just want to let you know how much it means to me because I just thought I was a small chested, big hipped girl that wasn't going to ever get to do anything. And here I am, I'm getting to be in the, you know, do all these things. And thank you so much for allowing this to happen or making this happen for me. So those are the best moments that I have is when I see a girl or, or like when I was telling you about their pictures, when the first ones they send in, they're so clumsy that I call them, uh, I, I tell my hubby that they look like um, Bambi on ice. <laughs> Bambi on ice. They're so cute. But they're, and then you see them develop in a sense of confidence and they begin to know about who they are and they see their own beauty. Oh, my God. That is so rewarding. That's the best part. That's so awesome. And I just see these girls going, oh, my God, I'm pretty, you know. I didn't ever know that I was pretty. I knew I was a good gamer. <laughs> <laughs> so that's definitely the most rewarding part. Yeah, that's awesome. I can definitely see. It's like you're like a mother to like hundreds of kids pretty much. It's like Yeah, the mama cat and they're my little kitties. <laughs> yeah, that... So I I want to I want to do I need to do a, a I need to do a, a cosplay as Catwoman. Then I'd have all my cat my kitties. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, they're awesome. So, as far as continuing the year out, what other events um, are you guys going to have a presence at? Obviously, you said QuakeCon. Are there any other events to finish out the year? Yep, we'll be at, well, yeah, well, well, there's a lot of smaller ones, too. Like, um, what what, what day, uh, Friday or Saturday is a LAN, and um, one of my girls is going to be, uh, oh, what's the name of it? Uh, it's it sounds like it sounds like oh my gosh okay it's two words it's a, a League of Legends character exiled Morgana uh, she's going to be exiled Morgana at a LAN in Miami so there's a lot of smaller events okay but then the bigger events are are quite kind in packs um, I have a possible possible working on one for GamesCon because oh she's wow that'd be huge. Yeah, but she's just one girl, but she doesn't speak German, so that was been my only thing, and I'm trying to talk them into it anyway. So we'll see how that goes. Yeah, Gamescom, that would be pretty. Uh, that'd be pretty impressive uh, if you could uh, pull that one out. Tokyo Game Show would be another one too if you could pull that Tokyo one off. Tokyo Game Show. Tokyo Game Show is almost, I'd say, nigh impossible because there are a million, probably literally, <laughs> models there. Right. And so it'd be really hard for me to get someone because they'd say, why? We have all our girls local. You know, and I have actually, I have some girls, I have a couple in Australia, a couple in um, England, and one in France, one in Germany. And then I have a girl in America that's going over to Germany for GamesCon. And then, uh, so, but I have them pretty much in America. But yeah, you're right. It'd be cool. I'd, I wouldn't mind going to TGS. I may do that some year. Yeah, I'd love to go there. That would be awesome. I've never been to Japan before, so that would be... That'd be a learning experience. Um, I've it's heard, fun. Of, yeah, I've heard like many it. awesome things about Japan. <laughs> I, I modeled over there, but I modeled in Osaka. I didn't model in. 
Okay. Yeah. All right. So, uh, definitely appreciate your time, Ivana. Uh, I appreciate you. No. And I appreciate you, Sarah. Thank you. <laughs> you, know, you know, Nick and I, it's like we've been, it's like we, basically, we basically just totally took over the show and you, and you barely even got to talk because we were just jabbering I'm the whole having time. one of those moods, but don't let, I don't want to drag you guys down. And you were just so adorable, so it was fun listening to you. Plus, I, <laughs> I, so it kind of worked out then, because if you'd been like really hyper and all that, then we would have been our toes. <laughs> I would have been the one out of the discussion. <laughs> yeah, no, that's what like I, was. I wouldn't do that if if somebody's talking. I'm not gonna like unless it's somebody not important like Bronson, <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> then I won't talk and cut them off. I mean, you know, have respect for the guests, not for Bronson. <laughs> that's so funny. I love I you. Don't know. <laughs> I don't know. The people. Uh, I, I'm actually. This is really exciting for me because I don't know y'all. Like y'all are new for me. Yeah. Because well, we're we're like the nerdy kids in the lunch in the cafeteria that you never want to sit next to. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we're, yeah. Much. Hopefully we can meet up at Pax Prime. That would be awesome. I would love to do that. If I'm I saw my, you, that'd be cool. I'm turning. I on mean, hopefully I can go. I hope so too. I'm turning on the AC. So did that affect the the audio? No, you're fine. Well, I'm playing ears hey. in the background, so I'm hoping that's not. <laughs> no, you you both are fine. Nick, Nick, you told me this is the first time you did a podcast in the car with someone in the car. Oh yeah, Ivana is with us in a car in a car in a you're in a parking. I'm in a parking lot. Parking lot. <laughs> Every time I've done an interview, there's it's they're either in their office, they're at home, not in their car, sitting in a parking lot. I know. Thank God for Skype on the iPhone. Woohoo! Because that's basically what happened. Yeah, and this is good reception and everything. And uh, now I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go hit the hit the grocery store, get some get a nice bottle of wine, some cheese, and go play. Oh, you know what I'm playing right now? Um, I'm catching up on games. You know how you'll have this huge stack of games? So I beat Diablo 3 a couple of times, and then I wanted to do some... Oh, I played Lego Batman, too. <laughs> which, I'm a huge <laughs> Lego person. I love Lego. Yeah, that's Lego. like my little brother. Oh, my God. He has every Lego game you could think of. <laughs> Me, too. It's like the only completed game. You no, know, I take it back because I completed Oblivion and the downloaded content. I'm huge on Skyrim, too, so I, I take it back. But I love all the Legos games. They come out, and it's like, yes. Um, so I did that, and then now uh, I had a stack of games, and I was like, okay, I really want to play. There's two games that, from, like I guess, probably two years ago, so I'm really like, this stack is ridiculous. <laughs> but I always wanted to play Enslaved and um, Vanquish, and uh, so I'm playing Enslaved right now. It's great! That's one of the same people that made Heavy Rain. Do you ever play Heavy Rain? I mean, oh, uh, God, I keep messing them up. Uh, Heavenly Sword, sorry. Oh, wow. Heavenly Sword! Yeah. Heavenly Sword is incredible. I love that game. It's I love that game too. Yeah, I'm Heavenly. Like, I was like, dang, why did they make a sequel? Like that game was so awesome. Like and it's a female protagonist too. It's like I know. and an awesome female protagonist. I know. We're working on. It. I'm working. I'm doing everything I can. Woohoo! But yeah, so I'm gonna go. Uh, so get wine and cheese in a game. That sounds good. Yeah, it sounds awesome. That sounds good indeed. But uh, we definitely appreciate your time. Wish you best of luck um, with Charisma Plus 2 in the future. And uh, Thank you. Uh, we'll definitely keep in touch. And, uh, that's and I'm going to call you for an interview. Oh, that'd be awesome. And uh, <laughs> feel free to ask me anything you want. When it comes to interviews, I tell people, like, okay, don't. Okay, Bronson. Oh, God. I knew, Sarah was, I, I knew Sarah was going to say that. I know I, know I deserved no, it. because you, oh, you're being to me, so I, um, whatever. <laughs> but, yeah, feel free to ask me anything. I'm pretty open when it comes to that stuff, so uh, feel free to shoot at me. And uh, I'm looking forward to it. That'll be fun. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it, Nick and Sarah. Thank you, and thank Thanks. you, Game Princess. All right, guys. So that's Ivana Bye. from Charisma Plus Two. Bye. We are out. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye. Thank you so much, Nick. I just adore you. <laughs> I hope it wasn't too boring. <laughs>